Howdy folks. You know, back in 2020, when we realized that we were not going to have a typical Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua season, we started recording little snippets of performances of music, interviews, storytelling, uh, going back into the archives and digging out some video of uh, performances from years gone by. We put them all together in what we called Tiny Tent Shows. We did over 40 Tiny Tent Shows. And what you're about to see now is a rebroadcast, an encore airing, if you will, of a previously recorded Tiny Tent Show. Thank you so much for supporting us, and we look forward to seeing you back beneath the canvas. Howdy folks and welcome to Tiny Tent Show, episode number 29, featuring a world-class multi-instrumentalist who also just so happens to have a key to the big top, even after the season is over. He sneaks in there sometimes to put on a show just for you, even after the season is over in a, in a year when the season never really got started. All the more reason to be grateful for these Tiny Tent Shows, it's allowed me to see some of some of these amazing musicians and talents from Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua even as I am hunkered down just like the rest of you. If you're familiar with Randy Sabine's work over the years and I know a lot of you are you know there are two reasons to watch tonight number one because you're in for a good humored performance by a seriously talented musician but also because tonight's show is made up of shows that Randy has either never played in public before or never recorded. Um, I didn't just toss out the term multi-instrumentalist earlier uh, just because it has a nice rhythm. I like words with nice, nice rhythms, nice rhythms, nice rhythms. But I tossed it in because uh, you will see during this show Randy moving from keyboards to guitar to violin flawlessly and he's at home pretty much with whatever instrument he picks up. I've never seen him play the triangle so uh, or the cowbell for that matter. But in general, he seems to know what he's doing, no matter what kind of instrument he picks up. Tonight, he teams up with Blue Canvas Orchestra members Ed Willett and Yasmin. And you will have an opportunity to watch Ed and Yasmin shine as well as they improvise on the fly with some of these tunes. As ever, we are grateful to you for tuning in and watching. We are deeply grateful to our sponsors. Um, just to let you know, the sponsorship monies and the monies that you donate, and by the way, there's a tip jar set up. You can donate in real time while you're watching the show. Um, a lot of the folks you're seeing on stage, this is what they do for a living. And uh, anything you can give helps. And also, um, you're helping folks behind the scenes. The people producing these videos, the people taking care of the tent, pitching the tent, keeping it rolled up, keeping it safe, doing all the things it takes to keep Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua going, especially during this unprecedented time. I, I think we've said everything we can about these times. And... Um, you understand what the big top is facing. So uh, folks have been so generous. If there's a chance for you to, um, uh, to add to that generosity, I know that the folks at the beautiful pearl gray and blue canvas tent appreciate it. So uh, we are going to move on now and uh, settle in for a bunch of fresh stuff. And oh, and by the way, Randy and I are going to chat, I think at intermission. At some point. I tried to get a hold of him earlier, but he was whining about wanting to go fishing. So we'll see. But I think we'll get together and have a chat and share it with you later in the show. But let's settle in for a dose of fresh stuff from Randy Sabine.
All right. Welcome to the Tiny Tent Show. I'm actually inside the tent right now. It's just wonderful to be back here in this beautiful blue canvas tent. And that's way past the end of the season. It's a little chilly up here. We would have closed it down a couple weeks ago. Uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to play uh, some original piano pieces. Uh, that first tune was called Raggedy Randy. And now I'm asking my colleagues, Ed Willett and Yasmin Bowers, to join me for a couple more. This uh, next tune is called Manuel Antonio. I wrote it when I was a student at the Berklee College of Music out in Boston, uh, 1977. It's titled after the, one of the national parks in Costa Rica. Beautiful beach with a rainforest jungle full of monkeys, and you can string your hammock right out by the, the sandy beach. And the next tune is, um, after that, is called Full Circle. I wrote this when my son Rylan was just a, a few months old. I was able to carry him around in the front pack, and there weren't too many things I could do uh, with him except sit at the piano and play. And so this tune emerged, and he reacted like uh, my typical audience. He would uh, stare up at me and uh, pay attention to me and, and uh, seem to be interested in the music, and then after a while, he would nod off. <laughs> so that's called the full circle. So here we go with, first of all, Manuel Antonio.
Thanks, you guys. You know, it's the first time that was ever performed publicly. What? It's always been played inside my living room and, you know, just by myself. So this oh, is just wonderful. Awesome. This is the kind of thing that can happen inside this tent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Same thing with Full Circle, this next tune. Oh, okay. Debut performance. Wow. I'm glad all of you could be out there seeing it live <laughs> for the first time. Here's a tune I wrote that was a, it's a love song inspired by Al Gore. And uh, if there's ever like a Grammy category for that, I think I've got, I got it, it got it sealed for victory. A love song inspired by Al Gore. <laughs> Oh. 
Who turned up the thermostat? I can hardly breathe. If we don't open a window soon, I'm gonna have to leave. Sorry for the inconvenience. Sometimes the truth is hard to see. Is it getting hot in here? Or is it just me? so warm, babe, you're melting my ice, but I got to admit, sometimes it feels pretty nice, but if we don't cool things off between us, we'll all be drowning in the sea, is it getting hot in here, or is it just me? a very short time it turns out it's easier to change the weather than it is to change our mind any closer man I can't stand the heat I hate to quit you baby you know this life has sure been sweet but we need a new direction we got to get back on our feet is it getting hot in here or is it just me is it getting hot Or is it just me? Is it just me? Or you feel it too? Folks, um, I've been able to track down Randy Sabine. Big sacrifice for Randy. I am led to understand that today is the last opportunity to go fly fishing in, is it Sawyer County? The entire state of Wisconsin, inland trout waters closed oh. today, last chance. Mm. So you can catch some trout on the big lake, but I'm, I'm an inland... I like to fish creeks that are about this wide, you know, and uh, sure. I'm going to go over to the, I'm not going to tell you where I'm going. Well, I was going to say easy there, Hoss. My secret spot. No one, no one knows where this place is. <laughs> Actually, growing up, my grandpa, I don't know how it was with you, but my grandpa, every lake was Gunny Sack Lake. Was always, yeah, right. Yeah. Where'd you catch Area them? Lake. Caught on an area lake. <laughs> an area lake. Yeah, he'd always, and then he always, he always had a hot tip, like, oh, I got a hot one, you know, and then where this, and then he'd go and, you know, not really catch anything, and then next week, it was another hot tip, and yeah, he'd say, yeah, I was buying worms, and I heard the guy at the counter saying they were really catching them out at Gunny Sack Lake. I'm going, Grandpa, do you think he's really going to say the good lake out loud? He's lying, too. He's a fisherman. <laughs> Tell me about... Well, we'll I have a working theory, and you can disabuse me of it if you want. 
so I grew up fishing for bass and northerns and stuff and just slinging bobbers and big old rapalas and daredevils. Uh, we had an old fly fishing rod up in the closet. I think it belonged to my grandpa and it was, it was bamboo or something. And now when I look back at it, I just cringe because we wrecked it and it probably was, a, probably might have been worth a little something right now. But I just, we just never went in for that fly fishing. And now I've, I've got a couple of people that I play music with now and then. And it seems like musicians kind of trend towards that fly fishing. And it's a little, you know, it's a little precious. It's a little like guitars and instruments. Like, oh, I see you're running the Gibson A340 with the humbucker pickups. And the, so yeah. maybe speak, speak to that, fly fishing. <laughs> oh, I, I grew up the same way you did. I mean, I'm, I'm not afraid to throw on a night crawl and catch a fish. It's, 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 it's very artful. You can, you can, the flies are beautiful. It's aesthetically pleasing. Um, and I like to tie my own flies and... Uh, but I never fly my own ties. I thought that might be fun, you know, if it's windy enough. But I like the, uh, I like the rods, you know, you mentioned bamboo. I've got uh, my dad's Orvis bamboo rod, which is very light. I have my great grandmother's bamboo rod as well, which you know, it's like a surf rod, it weighs a ton. But um, it's just another method of, of, of not catching a fish, you know, you can throw a spinner out there and not catch fish and you can, throw a fly out there and not catch. So it's nice to have a lot of options. My, my impression. Um, uh, to not catch any fish. But. My impression is you can, you can not catch a lot of fish cheaper if you don't use a fly rod. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to go. If you want to catch a fish, you've got to go. This is a good so point. Increases your chances of catching fish. That's a good point. I haven't caught a so fish. I'm, I'm tempted not to go today because it's like 40 degrees and it's windy, but it's the last day. So I'm, I might just go look, see what happens. Well, we're having a, a little trouble with your signal, but I heard you say you're tempted to go today, but it's about 40 degrees. Um, but you're tempted to, what I loved, what I did catch is he said, you're tempted to go and just see what happens because that's, that's usually how it starts, isn't it? Well, I'll just sling one here. and Yeah. Well, I'm just going to look at the water and <laughs> see if anything's moving around. And maybe, maybe I'll hook the rod up. You know, maybe I won't. I don't know. So this is Let's a see. compared. Maybe I'll come home. My lip. Compared to your fly fishing aesthetic, this is a complete caveman situation. But one of my favorite things is I love shooting carp with a bow and arrow. And uh, I just find that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I that... just, you know, Actually, I don't know what to say to that. I don't. You don't have to say anything. I'm just enjoying this image of, of us meeting on the river sometime. <laughs> I'm shooting at carp and you're over there yeah. disdaining me <laughs> with your fly rod and your Orvis kit and your creel. Yeah. I probably that'd be my cue to try a different spot, probably. Although you know what? There there is a whole book. Fly fishing for carp. It's Good luck. A thing. <laughs> I wish those folks all, all the luck in the world. <laughs> I'm gonna stick with my method. Hey, in this show that yeah, you did, well, good. Uh, long as we're probably supposed to actually talk about things relevant to the tiny tension. Yeah. Um, I think the fishing stuff is important too. That's what you call on background, right? Knowing what you, what the folks yeah. know about us fishing now, that will just inform and flavor the performance that they're about to see. Um, Gotta have inspiration. But what I was gonna ask you is the, much of the music that's in the show tonight is music that is either, you've either never performed in public before or hasn't been recorded. And that made me think of a couple of questions for you. One was, um, let's, talk, let's go the opposite way. Let's talk about songs that maybe you've played a hundred times because you've been doing this a while and you've done it all over the world. What's the magic of music in that you can do a song that you, for the hundredth time, but in the moment, there's still that wonderful feeling of discovery and sharing, at least in my experience. What do you have to say about that? 
Well, especially uh, as a jazz musician, a lot of my music is instrumental and it's improvisation based, as I've been playing a lot of the same material um, for decades. And it takes a long time to learn your own tune. You know, I recorded, uh, my first album was mostly original music. So I've been playing those tunes for decades, but every time I play it, I develop new things, it becomes deeper and deeper. So I play, in contrast to classical music where I would study for months and months to play a piece and I would play it once at a recital, and then I would go on to a more difficult piece. My music in the jazz, the tunes are, are fairly simple. You can play them quickly, you write them quickly, and then you play them over and over and over and you, you get to know them and they morph with the different musicians that you play with over a period of time. So that is, uh, that's a very cool thing that happens. Um, and now this, when you talk about trying a brand new tune, um, a lot of times uh, the very first time you play it is sometimes the best, like in a recording session, you go, you go and you take one, take two, take three, and um, you go back, it was take one when the musicians were fresh on their feet. And then as time develops, you say, my gosh, 10 years later, I wish I could go back and play that tune again because it's so much better now. Mm -hmm. But it, it was, you know, it's, it's just very touch. It's like watercolor painting. You paint it and it's done. And you go on to the next one. It's, um, it's, it's temporal. Well, and I think I noticed that in, in watching the preview of this show and we were putting it together that, you know, when you throw it to Yasmin or you throw it to Ed, even for a non-jazz head like me, there's just this wonder. Uh, it's, it's exciting to watch a song unfold around a certain structure, but we don't really know where, where y'all are going to go. And I love the freshness of that. Yeah, this, this material, because it's mostly piano and guitar driven, and I've made my career mostly as a violinist, um, I've been playing this music for myself in my living room on the piano and guitar and, and never really put it on stage before and never played with other musicians. So that would be a great opportunity. I mean, this is exactly um, what the big top uh, part of is what the big top is about. New things, you know, try out something. Here's a here's some new music and debut these things. So I took the opportunity to to play piano and get involved with Yasmin and Ed and see what they would do on this material. It was so it was exciting for me uh, to do this. So it, it's um, kind of a little bit of a progress report and because we've all been theoretically sitting at home not doing much. And so here's, you know, here's what I've been doing as a little report card. Yeah. On the surface, it might seem like I'm actually doing nothing. But inside, it's just a model of industry. Well, I've said we're all hunkered and hustling at this point. <laughs> so, um, what about, it's, it's an interesting middle ground in this case because of the circumstances that we're in. Here you are coming out of your home uh, with the song that, no one, that not only has no one heard, but as you said, you haven't played it with other musicians. So you go to the tent and you sat down with musicians and yet you're still in that middle ground because you played it with musicians for the first time, but there, there is no audience because of our circumstance. So that had to be interesting too. You know, it's when you go into a recording studio and, and do an audio recording, there's no audience. And so you're playing for yourself, you're playing for the engineer and you listen back to it and you work on it till it sounds good. But there is something a little odd about being in a venue, you know, an auditorium, a, a canvas tent with a thousand seats, and you walk out on the stage and there's nobody there and you play through stuff. It's not a sound check, it's, it's a performance. You're actually recording it. When I've done TV shows, there's at least been a studio audience. Um, so it's very, you know, it had to learn how to do it, actually. Um, he had to imagine the audience. He had to talk to the audience that's not there. And it was, uh, it was challenging in that way. But um, I think the music uh, came off very well. I was very happy with it. It's, you know, working with Ed and Yasmin, top-notch players. And uh, it was exciting. I think you'll see my facial reactions. Uh, we, were, we were having a good time. 
Yeah, I think you can, you definitely still make that connection. I know I've done a series of streaming events, um, both readings and musical. And my the impression I've taken, and this is a very amateur take, but to me, doing the streaming events or the event like Tiny Tent Show that, that you just put together, I think of it in terms almost of the difference between stage acting and film acting. Stage acting, when we're on stage, there are certain beats, you know, you let applause grow, a swell and fade, a laugh swell and fade, all that sort of thing. And with this, sure. if you comport yourself in that same stage presence, it looks odd and out of place. But if you're almost talking directly to each individual person who's sitting at home watching, then I think, I think it works fine. Don't get me wrong. I think we, yeah. we both have just enough ego that it would be nice to hear people clap again. Yeah. I say that. Well, you know, I've played music and didn't get applause before, so you know, <laughs> I can handle. I can handle that. I I can I can give you a five. I'll do the short version, but I can do five minutes on what it feels like to be on a really big stage and have one very tiny little drop of sweat slowly working its way down the back of your neck because things ain't going the way you hoped. <laughs> Well, this was great, Randy. Thanks for taking time out of yeah. your busy fishing schedule. And uh, I, hope you, I hope you do get out this afternoon. Yeah. We, well, I enjoy well, shooting well. the breeze with you, and, and, and we like to poke fun back and forth. But I really do hope you get some of that good outdoor time this afternoon. And thanks so much for the show that, that folks are watching here. And it's, it's just great to, to see you guys, uh, you and Yasmin and Ed, stretch out on stage with some fresh stuff. It was great. All right. Nice to see you, Mike. Take care. Take on the road. All right, that was a little thing I wrote called the Shoreline Rag. I'd like to bring Yasmeen Bowers back out and uh, Ed Willett as well. Um, back in the late 80s, I was invited to be an artist in residence in this beautiful town in Colorado, Crested Butte, Colorado. And uh, when I arrived there, uh, they said, your job is to work with the children in, uh, in the morning. And then after lunch, uh, we'd like you to work on your art. So I went skiing. And I wrote a whole bunch of materials called the, S the Sound of Fish Dreaming or Sketches of Crested Butte, Colorado. And this is the tune called Donitas, named after a Mexican restaurant on the main drag. Donitas. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right. Um, here's a brand new tune. I know um, a lot of us musicians were completely out of work. And uh, I, f I fell right into it, actually. I was very comfortable not doing anything, not getting in my car, driving anywhere, not loading my gear up. Um, gave me a lot of time to uh, play the piano, and look out the window with my guitar. And when you do stuff like that, <coughs> Sometimes you create a new piece. And so this little thing arrived uh, during the pandemic. It's really hard to, to title instrumental tunes. So I'm just calling this Waiting for Spring in Washburn, Wisconsin during the pandemic of 2020.
waiting for spring in Washburn, Wisconsin during the pandemic of 2020. Spring finally came, so did summer. Now here we are at the tent, way after old last night. A little chilly up here, not too bad. I've seen worse. Yeah. So we're going into the, uh, the fall and the winter. Let's see what people write now as we go into the darkness. Well, happy songs. <laughs> I hope. This is something I wrote long before I even thought a pandemic could possibly even happen. This is sort of a, a pandemic of its own. <laughs> Well, he goes for the throat at the drop of a hat. He'll get your goat right off of the bat. He lies through his teeth over the sheet and grin. He'll say that he's sorry and then to do it again. He'll be picking your pocket while he's shaking your hand. He'll stab you in the back while you're sinking the sand. Oh, look at him go. Oh, no, 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 he's the CEO. He does whatever it takes for the bottom line. He takes whatever he wants. Well, that seems just fine. He'll take the shirt off your back if you run out of gas. He'll catch you with your pants down just to cover his ass. He'll be raking it in while he's robbing you blind. Oh, we take it on the chin. We must be out of our minds. Oh, look at him go. Oh, no, 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 no. He's the CEO. CEO. Whatever he sells us, no matter what the cost, we do whatever he tells us, cause he's the boss. Well, he knows all the secrets, he's got a license to kill. He says he'll never use it, <laughs> but you can bet that he will. Well, he'll muddy the water and blacken the air. He'll marry his own daughter, he doesn't even care. Oh, look at him go. Oh, no, 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 he's the CEO.
the CEO. Oh, look at him go. Oh, no, 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 he's the CEO. CEO. We got one more tune here for you, and I'd like to thank Yasmin and Ed for putting in the hard work of learning a whole bunch of new material. It was, it was a, a fun show for me to put together. I haven't uh, done my own show on the big top stage for a long time. It's part of the BCO. I, I get to contribute a, a number or two when we do our, our shows, or uh, sometimes in the, in the house shows, uh, they'll take one of my suggestions. But it's, it's really nice to be able to be on this fabulous stage and be able to play my own, own original material. Basically, world premieres of, of this material. Um, we talked a little bit about um, composing uh, instrumental music. It's difficult to name them. Um, but in this case, I had the title first. Um, I knew it was going to be a waltz, and I knew it was going to be for uh, this guy I know named Walter. It's going to be called Waltz, Waltz. And you can only walk around with that in your head for, for so long until you actually have to write the tune just so you can actually say the phrase in public, Waltz, Waltz.
Thank you very much, everybody. See you around. Well, folks, that's our Tiny Tent Show for tonight. Thank you to Yasmin, to Ed Willett, and of course, to Randy Sabine. And a gigantic thank you to our sponsors. Jim and Joy Perry, Memorial Medical Center, Rondeau's True Value in Cable, Wisconsin, Pete and Colleen McIntyre, Pete and Sarah Richter, Myra Ainer. And again, as we said earlier, if there's any way that you can join these sponsors, we certainly hope that you will consider it. Until we can sell tickets to attend the real deal, this is what keeps the tent pitched and keeps the talent talenting. And I intend, again, as always, to include those folks behind the scenes, the folks you don't see framed on the stage. There's a lot of other folks putting in time and effort here. In these times, more than ever, we are grateful for your time and attention, and uh, I hope you're taking care of yourself, taking care of your neighbors, and that you're receiving some of the same in return. And now the time has come, not to say goodbye, but to do as we do where I come from, and that is to say, well, I suppose, forward. Mm -hmm.